Hey, Retcon Raider here, and uh, welcome to Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden, by Bearded Ladies Consulting. Now this is a game I've been looking forward to. For those who haven't been following it, Road to Eden is a story-driven RPG with a turn-based tactical combat system and a heavy focus on stealth and exploration. It also makes use of a uh, rather intriguing setting that was first introduced in a Swedish tabletop RPG back in 1984. While I never played the original game that inspired it, I'm a big fan of tabletop RPGs and of retro sci-fi settings. To me, this game reminds me of classic properties like After the Bomb, Gamma World, or uh, <laughs> even Hell Comes to Frogtown. Anyway, we'll be getting started in just a moment, but first, I should mention that I'm taking part in the revenue share program that the developers just recently introduced. Basically, if you order the game through their main website and use the promo code associated with my channel, then you'll get a 10% discount and I'll get a small share of that sales revenue. They did send me a free copy, but uh, let's be honest here, I actually bought and beat a personal copy over the weekend so I was always going to talk about this game. At any rate, I'm not really expecting much from the deal, but uh, I'll put the details in a pinned comment below, and uh, that said, let's get started. Okay, first things first, we have to choose our difficulty. Personally, I think the default difficulty setting just about has the balance right. It's challenging, even uh, overwhelming until you get used to the combat meta. And the only thing that uh, really changes at higher or lower difficulties is the amount of damage that enemies inflict. There's also an Iron Mutant mode, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You only get one save slot, and uh, death is permanent. It's an intriguing concept, but uh, one I think we'll avoid for now. After all, this is a brand new release, and uh, while it's stable, it's not an entirely bug-free experience. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with these settings, so uh, let's move on. <laughs> Gotta love that rolling die in the corner. Another day, another mission risking our necks for the Ark. You know, I ask myself, Ducks, why are you out here? And you know why. The Ark's water pump is broken again, and Hammond said he needs more scrap to fix it. Yeah, well, we'd do it a lot better if he'd sent us somewhere with actual scrap to find. Why do you have to be so annoying? Come on, we gotta head back before Prep closes for the night. And here we are, Mutant Year Zero. We don't have much to go on at the moment, so uh, let's start following this path and uh, see where it takes us. Trust me, I'm not annoying. Shut the hell up. Want to see annoying? I can show you annoying. What's wrong with you? We're in the zone. Keep your eyes open and... Mouth shut. Yeah, you only told me that 9,000 times already, Borman. I have to say, I really appreciate the full voice acting. It's done pretty well, too. Anyway, looks like we're trying to find our way back to the Ark, which means we're headed south. Oh, but uh, one thing I will criticize real quick is the uh, lack of a localized minimap. It's not that big a deal when you're in a smaller area like this one, but uh, it can get pretty disorienting later in the game. Still, in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty minor complaint. Jackpot. We got ourselves some scrap metal, Borman. This is worth a lot of grog back at the Ark. Scrap can be exchanged for weapons, consumables, and outfits in the Ark shop. It's the uh, basic currency of Mutant Year Zero. The air stinks like mutants. Not just any mutants. Stalkers. Tight muscles. Good meat. I smell it too. Where there's stalkers, there's Ark. Where there's Ark, there's... Killing time for Skizzix and Treble. Oh, they're close, 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 close. Over there. Come, brother. I'm on their trail. Ah, and uh, here's our first taste of the combat system. Tactical combat. 
combat is turn-based. Each stalker gets two action points per turn. Some actions, such as shooting, throwing, or sprinting, will end your turn once used. It's a pretty basic and intuitive system. If you've played the newer XCOMs or any similar two-action point system, then uh, you should already have a pretty good idea of how this works. One thing that is a little unusual is that the hit progression only changes in 25% increments. You're essentially rolling a five-sided die to determine if you hit or miss, and it's possible to get a 100% chance to hit. Anyway, these guys are your basic tutorial enemies. They're not going to put up much of a fight. In fact, since we can kill them in a single shot, they're not even going to get the chance to attack us. That's a luxury we won't get to enjoy much longer. The enemies get a lot tougher once you're past the tutorial. Got that right. Nice. Now, obviously, we've just blown our stealth. If this guy actually survived the turn, he'd be able to alert any other nearby enemies. In this case, though, it's obviously not a problem. Bye-bye. <laughs> you did it, kid. Never seen ghouls this far south before. They're getting closer to the Ark every day. Something's up, Borman. Looks like we just found our first weapon mod, too. The Broiler 50. Plus one additional crit damage. 50% chance to burn enemies. Ancient Fire Torch. When attached to any weapon, this will give a chance of shooting flaming projectiles. Good against flesh enemies. Chronicler Elvis. Sadly, we can't actually equip that until we uh, get back to the Ark. We'll just hold on to it for now. Hey, over here. Ah, the metal bird. That's a... That's a... We saw one of these things once. Filled with zone dogs, right? Oof. The ancients sure knew how to build big pieces of garbage. I've got to say, I really love the atmosphere in this game. The Metal Bird, a winding path between the mountains and forest, somehow ignored by the other stalkers. There are rumors that this is the resting place of a large metal bird and the home to a ghoul tribe. Granted, it's not exactly Shakespeare, but uh, I really appreciate that every location has its own little story. At any rate, let's walk the perimeter real quick and uh, make sure we're not missing any hidden loot. The developers really love hiding scrap and uh, other hidden items all over the map, so it's usually worth your time to do a little exploring. Oh, uh, one thing you might notice is that lootable items do tend to have an item sparkle, but uh, it's actually amplified by your flashlight. Sneaking around is generally going to be safer, but uh, it also makes it a lot easier to miss valuable loot. Oh, hold up. Stealth mode. Hold it, ghouls. I don't like the look of that big one. We have to be sneaky. Okay, here's the plan. We turn off our lights, then hug the water. Go around them. Red Skulls. Enemies with a red skull are too high level for your team and will kill you. Avoid Red Skull enemies and explore the zone to find encounters that match your team's level. Sounds like a plan. I will rip off their tiny stalker arms and beat their faces till they die! Faces too ugly to beat! No one loves a stalker! Give me the stalkers! Let them come! Where are you? Orcs don't even love stalkers. <laughs> Again, this is a pretty basic part of the tutorial. As you explore the zone, you'll occasionally come across enemies who are clearly too powerful to beat. 
but it's always important to uh, remember where they are because you can come back and kill them later in the game. In this case, we can clearly see those ghouls were guarding some sort of weapon chest, so uh, it'll be worth our time to uh, come back and clear them out once we're actually powerful enough. For now, though, let's move on. East Outpost. Rot ghouls are nesting in this cabin. This normally wouldn't be such a big deal further out in the zone. However, they have established themselves too close to the Ark for comfort. Interesting. You'll notice that we uh, actually discovered this location by manually walking through a zone transition area. That's pretty much mandatory as we uh, head back to the Ark, but... Once we've discovered a larger number of locations, we'll actually be able to fast travel between them from the world map. For now, though, we have to do this the hard way. Alright, let's have a look around. And, uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for ghouls. The Ark's up ahead. Home, sweet home. Oh, I'm gonna kiss that elevator when I see it. Get upstairs, take a bath, get a grog with the boys, get another grog with the boys, foot massage. Ah, oh, it's gonna be great. Oh, interesting. That car actually has a tree going right through it. That implies that the car was either dropped on it or that the tree actually grew right through it. That really makes you wonder how long it's been since the apocalypse. A campsite. Looks like a family lived here. Lived here and died here. Nothing like a bunch of skeletons to put your mind at ease. Hmm. That's sad. Healing. You can use a med kit at any time to heal your stalkers in the inventory. Healing outside of combat always refills you to full health. So, basically, you can use med kits for emergency patch jobs in combat, but it's always going to be more efficient to uh, use them between fights. Of course, it's uh, most efficient if you don't get hurt in the first place, but that's easier said than done. There's a cabin up ahead. Definitely feel a ghoul vibe coming off of it. So we run in? Guns blazing? Too dangerous. If we're sneaky, we can get into a good position. A good position keeps us alive. Turn off your flashlight. Sneaking. If you are undetected, you can scope out enemy positions and kill isolated weak enemies using your silent weapons. This can tip the balance of a fight into your favor by reducing overall enemy numbers. Now, we obviously got a taste of the stealth system in the uh, previous area, but now we actually get to put it all into practice. Let's douse our torch and uh, see if we can actually pick a few of these guys off. Oh, it's uh, also important to note that none of Borman's starting weapons are actually silent. They're good for killing ghouls, but not for doing it quietly. If we want to avoid raising the alarm, then we're going to have to rely on Ducks and his crossbow. It's a pretty weak weapon overall, but uh, its main advantage is that it's silent. Anyway, let's have Ducks take the lead and uh, see what we can do here. Hungry! Hungry! I guess we take the Ark. Taste the mutants. <laughs> Love me some mutants. There we go. Rip their hearts. Crush their... Hey, hey. You hear that? You hear that noise? I hear my stomach. Hungry. Kill. Okay, so we can already see three ghouls. Two standing out front and uh, one walking behind the cabin. 
We've also got a little cluster of loot here. That's a nice find. Let's uh, ease our way forward and uh, see what's inside that chest there. Gaper. This gas-powered cannon, humorously named after the type of damage it has been known to deliver, launches fat, chunky shells. What the Gaper loses in subtlety, it gains back in power. Can knock back most enemies. Chronicler Eli. Hmm, looks like a pretty solid weapon. Low crit chance and ammo capacity, but uh, let's compare it to Borman's starting weapon. Yeah, okay. Borman's scattergun is probably the better weapon in the long run, but we could really use that extra damage in the short term. Six damage is enough to kill a ghoul hunter in one shot. All right, let's take out that ghoul butcher. Ducks should be able to handle that. Cover. Low cover grants a 25% defense bonus, while full cover grants a 75% defense bonus. Flanking. Flanking a cover position will cancel its defensive bonus. Okay, so it's your basic directional cover system. Again, if you've played games like the new XCOM or other similar titles, then uh, you should already be familiar with the concept. Now, in this case, we just need to take out that butcher without the other guys noticing. It doesn't matter if he sees us, as long as we kill him before he gets an action. Gotcha! You did it, kid. Very nice. One down, two to go. Level up. When your stalker team levels up, each mutant gains mutation points. Mutation points can be used to unlock powerful combat mutations, or to improve your stalker's stats, such as health or movement range. Alright, let's take a look at that. Mutations are either major, minor, or passive. Only one of each can be set in your loadout. Stat bonuses are permanent, and are always applied, regardless of loadout. Your loadout can be changed in the inventory at any time outside of combat. Aside from equipment, mutations are the main way that you'll be improving your characters. Like the tutorial said, there are three different types of mutations, but you can only have one of each type equipped at any given time. The square ones are minor mutations, while the hexagons are uh, major mutations. Those both have to be manually activated in battle, but uh, the circles mark passive mutations, which are always on as long as you have them equipped. In Borman's case, he's largely a man of action. He won't actually get access to passive mutations until at least halfway through the game. Though you can at least stack his health, making him a little tankier than he already is. Ducks, on the other hand, is focused more on outmaneuvering the enemies. Most of his mutations focus on faster movement speed, getting into uh, elevated positions, or temporarily immobilizing enemies for one or two turns at a time. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that uh, you need to get used to changing your abilities on the fly to uh, suit the battle you're about to get yourself into. We've only got one point to play with at the moment, so uh, let's go ahead and boost Borman's health. As for ducks, Skull Splitter's not a bad ability, but that loss of accuracy is a, a little too risky for my taste. I think we'll save his points for Knee Shot instead. Being able to uh, immobilize an enemy is a very valuable asset. Anyway, let's get back to it. We've still got a couple of ghouls to kill. Regroup. Ah, there's some uh, weapon parts. Those are used to rank up your weapons back at the Ark. It takes 30 weapon parts to get to rank 2 and uh, 60 to get to rank 3, with each new rank granting a uh, plus 1 bonus to the weapon's damage potential and uh, updating the weapon's cosmetic appearance. Weapon parts are actually relatively rare, so uh, you have to be careful what you end up spending them on. Alright, let's do this.
Nicely done. That got us a level up and our first artifact. Those are special items you can trade in for permanent bonuses. The Boom Box. A strange talking box that hisses at you like a snake when powered on. Sometimes, depending on where it is placed, it will speak to you with beeps, whistles, or even faint voices. Includes a handy slot in the front for keeping things in. Chronicler Zweeb. Look at this beauty. The ancients left a lot of ugly junk behind, but once in a while you see something like this. Wonder what these buttons are for. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I'm not kidding around. Lay off the buttons. What's up your butt? That's a bomb, all right. They used to call it a boom box. Touch that red button, and it goes boom. Don't be pretending you know what any of this crap is. We'll bring it back to the Ark and show it to Prip. Ask him what it's worth on the black market. <laughs> You've got to love that uh, post apoc trope where uh, people are trying to comprehend what ancient items were used for. Alright, we need to head south, but uh, let's angle off to the east a bit, just to make sure we're not missing anything. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's find our way back to those stairs. Hold on, this doesn't look right. Let's double back the other way. See, this is where a localized minimap would really come in handy, but uh, again, minor complaint. There we go. Okay, moving on. the world ends, you did it to us. When the ice melted, you said nothing. When the plague spread, you did nothing. When the nukes dropped, you became nothing. At least that's what the Elder says. But cheer up, you'll be happy to know that despite your mistakes, life remains. In a small settlement high above a raging river, people are living and thriving. We call it the Ark. The Ark is humanity's last outpost, a lonely island in an ocean of chaos. Within these walls, we help each other create a new civilization on the ruins of the old one, with the guidance of our leader, the Elder. The Elder tells us we're safe as long as we never leave, because outside these walls lies the zone, the never-ending wasteland. A mass grave spanning the planet Littered with your crumbling monuments to your hubris and arrogance. What the Elder chooses not to tell us is our food and water supplies are running dangerously low. 
That's why he relies on stalkers. Adventurers who leave the Ark, explore the zone and scavenge for precious resources. Stalkers are tough enough to resist the rot and they got the smarts and the firepower to keep the zone ghouls at bay. Stalkers have to be more than human. That's me, Mr. More Than Human, a.k.a. a mutant. I look weird to you, but hey, you look weird to me. So let's leave it at that. If the Stalkers come back from the zone alive, the Ark survives another day. If the Stalkers don't come back, the legacy of mankind will be lost forever. At least, that's what the Elder says. Wow, now that's how you do an opening animatic. I know I've mentioned it, but uh, I love this game's atmosphere. Home sweet home. The elevator's up ahead. Ark outskirts. Inside old man-made clearings lie strange remains of what appears to be of ancient nature. The area stretches into the forest southwards as long as your eye can see. This seems to be the only entrance to the Ark. Hmm. Given the uh, railroad tracks to the south and the obvious wrecked train cars, I think it's pretty safe to assume that this used to be some sort of rail yard. Can't go that way yet. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Got two ghouls hiding over there. I think they want to hitch a ride on our elevator. Forget that. Let's sneak around and see if there's any others. That sounds like a plan. Let's creep along the edge of the uh, map here and keep an eye out for more threats. That'll also give us a chance to collect some more loot. Oh, uh, as a side note, I do want to make a solid effort towards finding all the lootable items, but uh, I don't want it to slow things down too much. I'll give the area one pass, but uh, then I'll come back between episodes, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Hmm, this looks promising. No enemies in sight, either. Stalker Clara note. It's a crying shame. With this to barter, Delta would have surely given us the discount she mentioned. So, here's the deal. A working spark machine lies to the east of the Iron Serpent, within the scrap ruins. This was one of those devices for burning things together or whatnot. But of course, there's no silver lining without a cloud above it. Them damn ghoul bastards who lurk in the ruins came out and chased us away before we could recover it. Next time, ghouls, we'll get you good. Stalker Clara. Well, let's just hope she's not one of these uh, relatively fresh corpses lying on the ground. Can't imagine why she would have uh, left her note here otherwise, though. Snazzy Visor. 25% added to weapon range. Military grade tactical visor used in the poker stealth conflict. This stylish piece of gear reduces glare granting its wearer a range bonus. Chronicler Maddox. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds about right. Okay, now, we could give this to Duck since he's basically our stand-in sniper, but I don't think he really needs the extra range. Let's give it to Borman instead. 
It'll help offset the uh, shorter range of his shotgun. <laughs> Looking good. All right, let's get back to it. Aha, uh -huh. looks like we've got a marauder and a butcher. They're far enough apart that we should be able to pick them off separately. Sorry about that. You're earning your scrap, kid. Over here. All right, let's keep walking the perimeter here. We'll come back for the butcher in a moment. There's the elevator. The uh, zone transition obviously leads up to the Ark. We'll just ignore that for now. Hmm, another gate. Guessing it's locked. Yeah. That's fine. We've still got business here. Stalker Vest. Plus one armor, plus two hit points. Found often across the zone, mainly upon the corpses of stalkers, hence its name. This light, flexible armor is easy to move around in, although it doesn't offer the wearer a great deal of protection. Chronicler Dentis. Well, it's not much, but it's certainly better than nothing. Let's toss that on Borman. The armor mechanics are pretty straightforward. That one point of armor basically just uh, blocks one point of damage from most conventional sources. Won't do much against uh, fire or electricity, though. Hmm, that's strange. Thought it was a uh, butcher we left by the gas pumps. That's fine, we can kill this guy too. Nighty night. They heard it coming. Maybe they moved around more than I expected. Hey, follow me. These guys are charmers. There's only two of them, so uh, thanks to the shotgun, we shouldn't have any trouble taking them down. Wait here. Let's spread out a little bit, get Borman a little closer. All right, let's finish this. Sorry for uh, pelting you with your buddy's body. Now, uh, we could leave ducks hidden. In some cases, there'd actually be a reason to do that, but this time around, we obviously just need to kill that butcher. Oh. 
<laughs> All right, I think that's everyone. Ooh, and uh, we got another weapon mod. Ancient Sight. 20% added to weapon range. Iron Sight from a war that predates the Ark. Old but sturdy. Increases the range of whatever weapon it is mounted on. Chronicler Dementus. Huh. Chronicler Dementus uh, actually got that one right. I guess that just goes to show that they uh, take weapons technology a lot more seriously in the post-apocalypse. Anyway, let's do one more pass and uh, then we'll head for the elevator. Over here. Alright guys, we're past the 30 minute mark, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'll hit the pause button for now, but uh, I will start working on a second episode. I'd at least like to get up to the Ark, meet a few NPCs, and uh, maybe clear another story location or two. That should be more than enough to give you an idea of how the game plays and uh, whether or not it's the sort of game that you might like to play. Of course, if you'd like to see more beyond that, then feel free to let me know in the comments below. Personally, I've been having a blast with the game. Like I said, I binged through the entire campaign over the weekend, so I'd be happy to justify another playthrough. I figure we could uh, blow through the entire campaign in 20, maybe 25 episodes. Oh, and uh, be sure to let me know what you think about the whole revenue share thing, too. I've never actually tried something like that before, so uh, I'm not really sure how people will take it. As with everything, it's just another experiment on my end. Besides, like I said, I already bought the game myself, and I was already going to talk about it. The best I can hope for here is that uh, it'll help offset the $60 I already spent. Anyway, check out the pinned comment below if you'd like further details, but uh, otherwise, I'll be back in a couple of days with more Mutant Year Zero. For now, though, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Mutant Year Zero, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, or the official store page over on Steam. As always, links are in the description.